Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here, and today I'm gonna show you how to French braid on this lovely head of mannequin hair. So, I'm gonna start off by detangling with my Denman paddle brush, which by the way, if you have never seen them before, they are life-changing. They're the bomb.com, and they're fantastic for your clients who are tender-headed. And um, I just love them, I absolutely love them. Um, I will tell you the white ones like this are a little bit more difficult to find, but uh, the black ones still work just as well. So once I have that all brushed through and detangled, by the way, I have this side clipped up because I'm gonna show you how on my next video how to do Dutch braids. Um, the ones, French braids, are also known as uh, invisible braids, by the way. And this is using the overhand braiding technique. So if you have not learned how to do braid overhand uh, technique, then go ahead and check out my video on that. I'll put a link to it in the top right corner. Just click on the eye and I will get it taken care of. So I'm gonna start off with the triangle section in the front. I always like to start my braids off like this with triangles. It just gives a bit of a neater look. And then from there, I'm just gonna split that into three. Just like so. So we've got our three strands. And this is using our same technique that we use for our overhand braiding. So I'm just going to go ahead and create my first set of crossing over. So now I've got my first set done. And from here, I'm going to come to the outside and pick up a bit of hair and add it right into this outside strand here and cross that over the middle strand. From there, I'm going to go ahead and switch over and do the same thing over here. We're coming from the outside portion adding into the outside strand, just like so. And we're going to cross it over the middle strand. Now I will tell you, the smaller that you do these, the more neat and professional your braids are going to look. The key thing that sets apart a professional braid from a, a standard braid that someone who just knows how to braid is doing is the size of those subsections that you're picking up and uh, the neatness with which you are working. So the more neat those braids are when you finish, the better. Which by the way, if you're needing to grip the hair a little bit more and they're planning on leaving the braids in, you're not gonna deconstruct it for an updo later, and you need a little bit more grip, you can actually just use a, a little bit of water and just lightly mist the hair or sculpting glaze to give the hair some added texture. And uh, that way they can take it down later and wear it wavy if they like. So I'm just continuing my process, always pulling from the very outside of that section. And I just kind of drag my finger on there. Some people I see do it with their pinkies. Um, for me, it's easier just to use my index fingers. And I'm just crossing over the middle. So each time, just coming from the outside, adding it to that outside strand, crossing over my middle strand, just like our overhand braiding technique. Now I will tell you, when you're first learning this, it can be a little difficult because you're having to pick up the hair and constantly switch hands. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit of practice. Don't get frustrated. The more you do it, the easier it will get. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up the pace some and then just continue this process on throughout this section. Now, of course, like I said before, these are called French braids, but they're also referred to as invisible braids using the overhand braiding technique. Uh, the thing I love about them is you can get them nice and flat. They work really well for like if you're trying to get that hair as flat as possible, like let's say you're doing a quick weave or something, you need to uh, get that hair flat down to the head. Uh, they also work really well for creating those beachy tousled waves. And the other thing I love about them is they work great for updos and you can even go in and deconstruct them and give them a really uh, whimsical but still messy and put together look all at the same time. It's kind of like that bed head look that everybody loves. So I'm just continuing this process all the way through here. I'll go ahead and skip to the end. Now when you get to the nape area here, it's always best for you to have your client tilt their head forward. What that's going to do is ensure that it is nice and snug back here and you don't have like that whole saggy butt situation going on because it's not cute at all. And then just make sure that you keep your hands down close to the scalp. So if your hands are quite a bit away, it's going to create a bit of droopiness and sagginess in the back of that braid which is really just not going to work for you. Now right now, I'm really close to this outside portion. Keep in mind wherever your hands are positioned in that parting is going to determine where that braid sits. So right now, because I'm close to the outside of her nape, it's going to cause that braid to rest 
on the outside of the nape because I'm actually bringing the hair from the far section over here and bring it over to the section on the nape. So just keep in mind, tilting that head forward, what this is gonna do is just make sure that it stays nice and snug. If their head is up and they are getting it braided that way, when they tilt their head down later, it's gonna cause a little bit of pain and discomfort. Whereas if you tilt that head forward while you're braiding, once you get behind the ear, uh, what it does, it just allows you to get it nice and snug, but not so snug to where your client is going to be in discomfort if they tilt their head down later. Which if you've ever had any type of braids that were really snug, you know you've got those bumps you can get in the nape of the neck. Uh, that is a step before snatching that hair out, which can actually cause permanent hair loss uh, cause, uh, called traction alopecia, and you definitely don't want that. All right, so I'm just continuing to pick up my small sections of hair all the way through and making sure to work in really neat, organized fashion. And once I get down here, I'm just gonna switch right into a standard overhand braid. Let me go ahead and move her around a little bit so you guys can see a bit better. Okay, so there you have it, you guys. That is a French braid from start to finish and you can see once we came up off the scalp we just went ahead and went into a standard overhand braid as you're seeing there. On the other side in my next video I'll show you guys how to do a Dutch braid or a visible braid so stay tuned for that one and if it's already posted I'll go ahead and link it in the top right corner. So until next time you guys stay glam and take care. Bye bye.